inclination to us to follow Jesus when we live life in the spirit and not life in the flesh. But you see, Jesus has made us free from the laws of sin and death. And what laws am I talking about? You all seen the Ten Commandments when Moses went up on Mount Sinai? That's the laws that we're talking about. You see, the law was weak and impossible for man to follow. God loved us so much that he gave Jesus to die for our sins. But see, the law required us to be perfect and righteous at all times. So when we live in the flesh, we set our minds to worldly things. We all know the worldly things are things of the world. But see, when we live in the spirit, we live in a holy lifestyle following Christ. For to be carnally minded is death. For to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see, the carnal mind is not pleasing to God because it breaks the laws of God. And see, anyone that lives in the flesh is not a child of God. I'm going to repeat that again. Just before. Anyone who lives in the flesh is not a child of God. And if Jesus is in you, you walk in the spirit of life. See, the spirit of Jesus is the spirit of eternal life. And see, as Christians, we are obligated to live like Jesus daily. If you live like the enemy, which is Satan, you will die. Amen. See, a lot of preachers won't tell you you'll die. Amen. See, I'm not an ice cream and cake preacher. I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. If you live like Satan, you're going to die. All right. All right. When you cut the lights out, that's it. Amen. But when you are led by the Spirit, we are the sons of God. Amen. See, we don't have the spirit of fear because we cry out to God in a time of trouble saying, Abba, Abba, Father. And all you old school people know what I'm talking about. What do we say in times of trouble? Father, I stretch my hands to thee. You know what the God I know? See, that's our grandparents and our great grandparents and our aunts and uncles. We know that if we don't know anything else. You see, that's the foundation because, first of all, we're coming helpless to God and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. You know what the God I know? We cry out and help. You see, the Spirit bears witness with our Spirit that we are children of God. And we are joint heirs of God in Christ. We suffer with Christ that we might be glorified with him forever. See, we are, the suffering we have there on earth is nothing compared to the glory God gives us. Yeah. See, we're going to suffer here on earth. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think when you become a Christian, everything's going to be nice. And, but uh, I got news for you. When you join the church, you might have a couple of demons, now you got 10 out there. You think it's going to be hard. You think it's going to be easy, it's going to be hard. That's why you have to put on what the whole armor got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you got to put your best on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep the devil from trying to enter into you. Yeah. And see, we wait patiently for the return of Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who gives us hope. Yeah. See, Jesus has saved us from the wages of sin. Because we all have fallen short of the glory of God. And yeah. we know the wages of sin is death. And what? The gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. My pastor used to tell me that when I was a new white pastor or PS1, he used to scare me to death. The first time he said it, I went home and told my mother, I said, I can't go to sleep. She said, why? I said, Pastor Wilson said, the wages of sin is death. And I knew I had been a sinner, right? So I thought I was going to die. So those old preachers can make you feel like that. And we need to bring that back again, go back to old school again. And just tell them, the wages of sin is death. Let's stop playing games. Right. And see, we are obligated to give God our first fruits. Amen. What are our first fruits? What are our first fruits? Our tithes and offering. Because the church cannot operate without tithes and offering. The lights cannot come on without tithes and offering. We can't, we can't operate without tithes and offering. Yeah. And if you do that, God will bless you. Exceedingly abundantly above all you ask. And so we want to give God our first fruits. Because he gave us his first fruit. Who was his first fruit? His son, Jesus. He gave us his only son. See, I only have one son. If they ask me to give him up, I don't know. <laughs> you see, God is merciful. I give you up. And he has wisdom and he loves us. We gave up his only son. And so because God gave up Jesus, he saved us from death. You see, by faith, we believe in God and Jesus. But when we search for God with a sincere heart, I say with a sincere heart, he watches over us and answers our prayers. So I'm giving him a faith prayer because he knows what we're faking too. And we know that all things work together yeah. for good for those who love God. Yes. They're called what? According to his purpose. Yes. And I want you to listen very carefully here. When God calls you, he qualifies you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of people question the calling of people. Amen. You see people get 
called me, said he called by God. Don't yeah. challenge him. Come on. Because guess what? Yes. When God calls, he qualifies you. Yes. That's what he does when he qualifies you. He sanctifies you. Yes. After he sanctifies you, he glorifies you. Yes. After he glorifies you, he justifies you. Yes. Right? Yes. When God calls you, yes. 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 he qualifies you. Yes. And then he sanctifies you. Yes. Then he glorifies you. All right. Then he justifies you in your position. Uh -huh. so everyone here that holds a position in the church, God calls you to that position, so you don't have to explain yeah. anything to anybody. All right. All right. All right. We ain't got nothing to worry about the God is for us. That's right. See, God loved us so much uh -huh. that he gave his only son, Jesus, yes, so we could have eternal life. Yes, and see, with Jesus on our side, who can condemn us? No one. Who right. shall separate us from the love of Christ? Right. Shall tribulation? No. Shall distress? No. Shall persecution? No. Shall famine? No. Shall danger? No. Shall death? No. For well, Jesus, we are willing to face death. It's like a sheep going to slaughter. Amen. And those of you that grew up in the country, you know that a sheep will let you cut him wide open. He won't say a word. Amen. See, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when they cut him open, he didn't say a mother word. Right. He was showing us a representation of the sheep. Amen. And also, a sheep could not function without a shepherd. Amen. You have a bunch of sheep running around by themselves. Yeah. They'll run off the cliff because they don't yes, have any leadership. That's right. So every sheep has to have a shepherd. Right. Every church has to have a pastor. Yes, so if you're not the pastor, you don't try to be the pastor. Right. 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 I am persuaded right. come on, come on. that death will not stop me. All right. yeah. Life will not stop me. Amen. Angels cannot stop me. Amen. Principalities cannot stop me. Right. Powers cannot stop me. Nothing can separate me from the love of Jesus. Yeah. Nor height, yeah. nor depth, yeah. nor anything will separate me from the love of Jesus. Oh. And as I close today, see, I told you I was going to finish that. <laughs> I'm saved by grace. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jesus died on the cross for my sin. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus died for my sin. Yeah. So that's why I'm saved. Not because I'm dead. I'm saved because Jesus died for my sin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sanctified by God who set us apart. Yeah. And see, I'm Holy Ghost filled. Come on now. Because during the day of Pentecost in Acts, the tongues came out and they spun around. And when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost and the Comforter to, to guide you until I come back. Yeah. So that's why we said that we're Holy Ghost filled. Right. And see, I'm baptized. You know what that represents, don't you? The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So as I leave here, I'm just going to tell you something. I'm saved, yeah. sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Baptized, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Baptized, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. I'm saved.
He did it and quit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I know y'all like that because y'all go home early today. Next week, you know, we'll be a little longer. Thank God for, for that sermon. Amen. Thank you, God. Sir. God's always come up with these little things. Man. Awesome. Man. Good, good job. Amen. You thank God for the message and the messenger. Amen. 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 Someone needs to respond on that sermon. Amen. Amen. Someone needs to respond on that sermon. Someone today needs to respond on that. Amen. The doors of the church is open.